Our story starts off with a homeless man named Tanaka Shinishi who lived in a little tent in the city of Shibuya. Subsequently, he had complained about how cold it had gotten, which was as a result of the heavy rainfall at that time. He then stated that before this rainstorm, he formally planned to go around the city and collect some empty trash cans, but he figured that it couldn't be helped and further wondered whether the area had already been evacuated. But due to his stubborn nature, he had gone out into the heavy rain anyway, and as he walked along, he realized that he got himself drenched in the rain, and subsequently begged the lightning gods to give him a break and not strike him. Just then, Shinishi had gotten struck by a long stream of lightning and a loud crackle sound was heard subsequently. Then in the next moment, people passing by had witnessed this incident and immediately ran to his aid. Then at that point, Shinishi didn't believe that he could be saved anymore, and after a while, his mind had begun to go blank, and as he laid there on the ground with his last breath, he had realized that he would never get to eat some salmon sashimi ever again. However, at the next moment, Shinishi had woken up naked in an unknown location, so he held his head while wondering why he was in such a place and also why he didn't have any memories of coming to that place. He then decided to try to remember what he was doing before getting there. He then recalled that his name was Tanaka Shinishi, a 56-year-old man who had been homeless for over a decade. After he recalled these, he also added that the last thing he could remember was that he had gotten himself struck by lightning in Shibuya. Shinishi then had a smile on his face because the fact that he could remember properly was a good thing after all. But in the next moment, his two brain cells had clicked, which made him wonder why and how he was still alive after getting struck by some lightning. He further reasoned and realized that he had come out of it unscathed and also noticed that he had the strength of his younger self. He then considered all these factors, so with some sweat on his face and a crazy look in his eye, he began to wonder whether this meant that he had gotten reborn. In the next moment, he went on to wonder where exactly he was, and from the nature of his environment, he was able to deduce that the area looked something like a labyrinth, and at the same time, he realized that he was so hungry that he could die. Just then, he noticed a wobbly animal on the floor, so he went on to poke it and was able to see just how squishy like that of a jellyfish, which made him wonder whether it was a land jellyfish. The sight of this strange animal made him realize that this place he found himself was quite different compared to the one he was familiar with. He subsequently wondered whether he had gotten reborn into another world. In the next moment, he had picked the wobbly figure up and remarked saying that it looked like a giant jelly or gummy. So considering just how hungry he was, he decided that he was just going to bite it a little. Then after he had sunk his teeth into it, he remarked saying that wasn't bad at all. There wasn't really any taste, but it was still quite refreshing like water, and at the same time, it had a quite soft texture along with a minty scent. However, he figured that this spicy feeling might get addicting, but it was still really ideal for hydrating. After a while, Shinishi had eaten the jelly until he had gotten full, and in the end, he wondered what that creature was in the first place. Just then, a banner appeared above the jelly which said that its appraisal result was slime. This made Shinishi wonder whether this meant that this creature was called a slime. At the same time, he wondered what this appraisal result meant in the first place. In the next moment, another banner had appeared before him which contained details about himself. But the banner had mentioned that he was currently 25 years of age. This then made him wonder whether he was actually reborn as a 25-year-old. Then after a little while, Shinishi presumed that there was no point in him worrying about it. So subsequently, he decided to look for an exit out of there. About half an hour later, Shinishi had gone out into the wilderness to scout for some food. He then spotted a nearby wolf and decided to chase it down and as he pursued it, he began to reason and wonder exactly how long it had been since he had gotten struck by the lightning that day. He assumed it that it could have been about month, but at the same time, it was entirely possible that a year might have passed. So shortly after, he had successfully killed the wolf and finally gotten some food. In the next moment, he thought of it to be a good idea to look for some corpses or something that were around there. Then after a little search, he had successfully found a corpse who had some armor on along with a sword. Shinishi took a single look at him and judged that they both must be of the same physique. So with that in mind, he had stolen the dead man's attire. And fortunately for him, it had fit like a glove. Just then, another banner had appeared before the sword attached to him. And this time, it mentioned that the appraisal result was a mithril sword. After which, he drew the sword and further wondered whether it meant that the metal used in making it was named mithril. But either way, the sword looked really good to him. Shortly after, Shinishi wondered where he was going to sleep in the labyrinth he found himself to be in. So after a little while of thinking, he thought of it to be a good idea to stay inside the wall of the passage. He then started by making use of a pickaxe from a corpse and destroy the wall to form a room. 
he subsequently reasoned that it would be the safest place in this danger zone full of monsters. After this had been done, he felt a little hungry, so he struck some stones together to get a fire going, and had subsequently placed some of the meat over the makeshift hot rocks he had prepared. And once he had prepared and tasted it, he realized that the meat had absolutely no taste and was also quite hard and chewy. However, eating meat still made him full, so taste didn't really matter to him at that point because it was all just a necessity for him to live. Then shortly after, he decided to check out the status screen again. So he took a look at it and remarked by saying that he didn't really notice a difference from before. And at the same time, he wondered whether homeless was truly the name of a race. Considering all these factors, Shinishi realized that he didn't know a lot of things about this world he was in. Apparently, his magic seemed to be none, so in that moment, it had become obvious to him that he couldn't magic because he hadn't seen any magic in action ever before in this world. In the next couple of moments, he realized that if he used his appraisal skill, he would easily know the names of everything, and moreover, if he were to use the skills a lot, they could power him up a lot, so in summary, it was all just thanks to these skills that he was still alive to that day. A couple hours later, Shinishi had just woken up from his nap, however, he noticed that he was experiencing some rather unusual body pains. This was probably because he was getting exhausted of recent, so subsequently, he decided to start massaging his feet simply because the feet were the lives of the homeless. Just then, a banner had appeared above him which informed him that he had gotten a new skill known as Pressure Point, and immediately Shinishi had seen this. He immediately jumped for joy because he had gotten quite bored with the skills he had already acquired. While he celebrated, he mentioned that he had only ever seen these letters three times, with the first instance being the time that there was danger detection, and the second being the leg strengthening warning. So at that point, he realized that he would have to repeat certain actions to gain a skill, and also, constantly avoiding enemies would give him the danger detection trait, while running would give him the leg strength trait. So having all this in mind, he had easily deduced that it was because he was massaging his foot this time that he had gotten the pressure point skill. He then chanted its name as a way of activating its power. But the moment he had chanted it, he noticed that he had developed some spots all on his feet. He proceeded to press one of the spots. But at the same instant he did that, he felt an immense pain, and subsequently, he also noticed that he felt a lot more tired than he already was. However, he also realized that if he were to use it on an enemy, it could stop their movements for around 60 seconds at the same time. It was also quite obvious to him that it would be a quite useless skill against them, and it would also definitely be hard to win against them like that. Shinishi acknowledged that he had never lost to any monsters around there, but could think of two monsters that were a lot stronger than him, which was a huge ferocious monster that was the boss of the area, and also a humanoid monster. Shinishi was a bit baffled at what that humanoid was in the first place, so he then decided to name him Jack, and also acknowledged that he was the greatest enemy that he should be cautious of since it was roaming around randomly after all. Just then, his danger detected skill had gone off which instantly made him scan his surroundings for any nearby monsters. So after a little search, he noticed a giant monster he had named as Jack standing behind him. He looked a little more and noticed that it had a little wound on its left eye, so it was quite obvious that it wasn't in all that of a good mood. However, Shinishi realized that Jack hadn't noticed his presence yet, so he subsequently decided to be a good boy and just leave quietly. But just then, Shinishi had stepped on a spear which had made a loud sound and also made Jack aware of his presence. So in the next moment, Jack had proceeded to pursue Shinishi with all he had. So after a couple minutes of chasing, Shinishi was surprised at just how persistent he was in the chase. But fortunately for him, as he continued to run, his leg strengthening skill had gotten activated, which made him escape Jack in a matter of mere seconds. In the next couple of moments, Shinishi sat on the ground while he wondered just for how long he would have to continue living this dangerous life. He wished to exit, but the place was so complex that he didn't even know where the exit was yet. For now, he thought of it to be a good idea to go to that nearby uncharted area because there might be something worth discovering there. In that same moment, he noticed a wall that was emitting some sort of strange light. He then looked to the side and noticed a girl an unconscious girl on the ground and immediately assumed that it was a dead body, and simultaneously wished her a peaceful rest. As he did this, he took a closer look and realized the massive chest size that she possessed and admitted that the girl was indeed a beautiful one. He then added by saying that it was pure disappointment to think that a woman with such beautiful watermelons would get lost in this labyrinth and die. Just then, this girl began to cough, which indicated that she was alive. Shinishi then helped her up while telling her to get up and not sleep in a place like that. And as he helped her up, 
he introduced himself to her, for which she replied saying that her name was Elna Furidirias. After this he went on to ask her whether she was hungry and also whether she would like to have some of his meat, I mean the meat he had gotten from the wolf. He then roasted it placed it before her, and as it was in front of her face, she blushed at the beautiful aroma which it produced, and in the next moment, she had taken a huge bite out of it, and from the look on her face, it was quite obvious that she enjoyed it. Then in the next moment, she had swung her staff at him and asked Hick whether he was able to understand her language, for which he replied giving a positive response. At the same time, he noticed that she could somehow speak fluently all of a sudden which made him wonder what the hell was going on. It was kinda obvious to Elna that Chinishi was a little confused at how she was capable of speaking like that, so she further explained that she had made use of some translation magic, and subsequently thanked him for the meat he had given her. After this, she reintroduced herself as Elna the mage, and the fact that she had called herself a mage made him understand that she was some kind of sorcerer. In that same moment, Elna had asked him what he was doing in such a place and further assumed that he was just there for work. Shinishi was confused by what she meant by work, so he went on to ask her to clarify him on that, and more importantly, to tell him where the hell he currently was. So Elna went on to explain that he was currently on the 19th floor of the Mojito Underground Labyrinth. So in that moment, Shinishi was surprised to hear that he was 19 floors underground, and subsequently, he had asked Elna to explain to him what exactly was this labyrinth, so she replied saying that even though she couldn't say for sure, it was often rumored to be something that was related to the ancient ruins. She also added that they may know the truth if they were to go down even further, however it was area that no one had ever seen before. With no time to waste, Shinishi had asked Elna for a lead on how he would be able to leave the labyrinth, so she replied saying that the only way for him to leave the labyrinth would be for him to go up the stairs located on each floor. Then after Shinishi had heard this, he thanked Elna for the information and bid her farewell in hope that they both would eventually see each other again. But right before he was able to leave, Elna had jumped on his back and told him to wait. After she had gotten his attention, she went on to explain that she had previously had some trouble getting out of the dungeon herself. Once Shinishi had heard this, HR immediately assumed that there were some kind of terrifying monsters on the way to the exit of the dungeon, so it wouldn't be that easy for her to escape. However in the next moment, Elna had covered her face in shame and told him that simply wasn't the case. She then informed Shinishi that she was just a mere beginner mage, and after that, he had given a rather dry response to her statement. So in turn, she was both shocked and annoyed at what a bland reaction he had given because she had formerly presumed that he was bombard her with questions such as what a mere beginner mage was doing in this labyrinth. So in the next moment, and also with a blush on her face, she pointed at Shinishi while stating that she wished to follow him, for which he replied saying that he didn't really have a problem with that. Elna was then surprised at how quickly he had agreed to that and re-asked him as a form of confirmation, for which he had given a positive response and also added saying that it'd definitely be a lot safer if they both went together. However, Shinish's real reason for this was because of the massive watermelons Elna had on her chest. After they had agreed, Shinishi had subsequently noticed that Elna's ears were quite long, so he went on to ask her why they were that way, for which she replied saying that she was an elf so it was perfectly natural. Over the next couple of hours being together, and after Shinishi had killed a few moments, Elna mentioned that she was quite impressed with his battle technique, so she remarked saying that he was quite strong, for which Shinishi modestly replied saying that the monsters weren't all that strong, but there were some who struggled against them. As they continued to walk, Elna mentioned that she was currently sensing three sounds coming from the one direction and six coming from the other, so she immediately suggested to Shinishi that they both just use the one that made fewer sounds. Shinishi agreed to this and subsequently asked her whether she possessed any sort of offensive type magic, so she replied saying that she knew one type but the power on it wasn't that great. However, it was probably capable of giving the target some burn. She then added that she wasn't the offensive magic kind of type but rather often made use of some support magic. She then swung her staff in the air which emitted a light so bright that Shinishi was forced to cover his eyes, and at the same time, he asked her to cancel the spell because the enemies might sense the magic presence and probably notice them, for which she agreed to do with a slight blush on her face. Just then, Shinishi noticed that Elna had a rather disturbed look on her face, so he went on to inquire what was wrong for which she replied saying that she sensed that something was coming. She could also tell that it was breathing quite hard, and from that, she could additionally tell that it must have been running for a while. Just then, the ferocious Jack had appeared behind them and was stomping extremely hard, so in the next moment, Shinishi had grabbed Elna by the arm and proceeded to run away with her, and as he ran, 
he made use of his leg-strengthening technique, for which Elna complained of him going a little too fast. Then after a few seconds of running, Elna had tripped over a rock and fallen over, and after that had happened, she immediately urged Shinishi to go on without him. But in response to this, Shinishi stated that he was going to be doing no such thing. He then faced the ferocious Jack and assumed a really cool battle stance. So at that point, Elna was on the ground and subsequently wondered what Shinishi was going to do. In the next moment, Shinishi drew his sword and took a swift slash at the orc. But even after that, the orc managed to escape with just a mere scratch on its face. Meanwhile, Elna assumed that they were no match for this orc, so she subsequently mentioned that she was quite confused as to why he hadn't run away by now, so Shinishi replied with an upbeat voice, saying that they had lost just yet, and at the same time, he added saying that it was a rather natural thing for a person to want to save their friends, then with a blush on her face. Elna was shocked to hear that Shinishi had considered her to be a friend of his, after which Shinishi asked for her support in the battle for which she replied with a positive response saying that she should just leave it to her. So in the next moment, Elna had held her staff and made use of her electric paralyzed technique to launch a wave of electricity at it, and after that attack, the orc was stunned. So Elna indicated that this would be the perfect time for Shinishi to launch his finishing attack. Shinishi understood this and stated that he was going to be taking the orc out with a single attack. However, at the same moment that Shinishi had launched his attack, the orc had smacked him away against the wall, which implied that his attack was way too weak. As Shinishi stood against the way, it was obvious to him that the stun attack that Elna had used on him wasn't all that effective, but at the same time, he knew that complaining wasn't going to do him any good, so he believed that the best move would be to plan his next move. But in the next moment, the orc has grabbed Elna and restrained her by holding her arm behind her back. Shinishi sensed the severity of the situation, so in that moment, he went on to wonder what exactly he could do to save Elma. Just then, his character banner had appeared again and informed him that he was now able to make use of a skill known as acupuncture push. So Shinishi went on to wonder whether it was even going to work against such a strong orc. But a few seconds later, and also with a quite serious look on his face, he realized that this was no time for him to think but rather a time to act, so he decided to make do with what he already had. So in the next moment, he called out the name of this technique and made use of it on the orc, and to Shinish's surprise, the orc had yelled in pain at the moment that it had gotten hit with the attack. However, at the same time, Shinish's energy had been heavily drained, and subsequently, he realized that he couldn't really use his right hand that well, so it was then obvious to him that it would make it quite difficult for him to kill any more monsters. And from the look of things, the effects of the acupuncture push was soon about to run out, so in the next moment, they both decided that they both had no choice than to make a run for it. A couple of minutes later, as they ran, Elna mentioned that heard some running water below them, so she subsequently suggested that they check it out. Then as they continued to run, Shinishi stated that he was sorry for that he couldn't take her to the surface, for which she replied saying that it was okay as long they would eventually get out of there someday. And more importantly, she subsequently suggested that they both went down quickly before the orcs were to catch up to them. After a couple minutes, they reached a relatively beautiful area with a body of water surrounding it. Shinishi went on to take a drink of the mysterious water and remarked saying that it was quite delicious and at the same time, he added that he was a lot surprised that the water was quite clean because it was transparent, and to him, the water looked almost clear to him. Elna wished to know what Shinishi meant when he praised the water so much. So in the next moment, she took a drink of the water and after this, she thrusted her staff in the air and attempted to use a skill known as Frame Burst, but it didn't work. She was surprised as to why this didn't work, so she went on to drink the water even more hastily. Shinishi was confused as to why she was drinking the water so impatiently, so he urged her to take it easy a bit while saying that there was enough water to go around for them all, and in the next moment, he had dragged her by the arms away from the water, for which replied with a yell, telling him to let her go because with that water, she would be able to become an even better sorceress and learn several new magic skills. Then with a serious face, she went on to explain that this wasn't just any ordinary water, rather it was a holy water which was considered to be a mystical liquid. She also mentioned that it was known for keeping monsters away, and at the same time, it bestowed various blessings on whoever was to drink it. Just then, Shinish's banner had appeared once again and this time. It has informed him that this water was one known as Saint Water. It also added that the Saint Water contained large amounts of magical power. Meanwhile, Shinishi was surprised to see that there was an explanation of what the item was in the appraisal result this time, but soon realized that his appraisal skill had gotten to the intermediate level. 
Meanwhile, Elna stated that at any rate, she always had a feeling that this water was rather special. She then added that it could apparently deter monsters that were to come into contact with it. So shiny she stated that it might not be that bad of an idea to set up a house around that area. Seeing that it would be a monster-free area, then in the next couple of moments, Shinishi suggested to Elna that it was about time that they got going. Subsequently, Shinishi asked whether they would be able to get out of there, for which he was replied with the idea of following the waterways downstream. They walked for a while and reached a dead end, so at that point, they both knew that it wasn't going to be so easy for them to get out of there. Just then, Elna had spotted the source of the water that was filling that area. It appeared to be coming from a lion-like fountain. Shinishi went a little closer to it and remarked saying that he had got some weird feelings about the lion's left eye. But in that same moment and after weirdly feeling over the lion's body, he had noticed a while in the left eye, so in the next moment, he had pressed it, and he had done that. A mysterious door had opened in front of them. Elna was both impressed and amazed at how easily Shinishi had been able to find that secret door. So in the next few seconds, they entered the room and saw a wooden house which resembled that of a family house. Then the moment that Elna had entered, she remarked saying that the room was really beautiful, and that she also had no idea that a place like that existed inside the horrific monster maze that she had been in. Simultaneously, Shinishi noticed a mirror, so he went in front of it to discover that he was still as ugly as he was even before he had died. He understood that he had been rejuvenated from the status menu, but the fact that all this was really happening in real life was just a little hard for him to comprehend because this meant that he had died once and had been reincarnated into the same person. Then in the next moment, Shinishi had a bright smile on his face while acknowledging that the fact that he was alive was a miracle. However, he still continued to cheer even though that he wasn't aware of the reason that he had been given a new life. The next morning, Shinishi was seen in the kitchen dressed in an apron and was trying to prepare some breakfast. And as he searched the kitchen for supplies, he noticed a device which resembled that of a gas burner. But this wasn't an ordinary gas burner because rather than it relying on the mechanics and actual gas, it just made use of magic to operate. So since he was hungry, he thought it might be a good idea for him to do some cooking. Meanwhile, as Shinishi was cooking, Elna had been awoken by the pleasant aroma of the food that Shinishi was preparing. She then went on to the kitchen to see that Shinishi was cooking something in the kitchen. Once Shinishi had sensed her presence, he mentioned to her that she was just on time because he had just finished cooking some meat. She then assumed that it was some kind of dried meat soup and subsequently mentioned that she wished to get a taste of it. She then took a slurp of the soup and remarked saying that it tasted terrible. She further stated that she always had a feeling that he ate this kind of food, which made her state even further that she questioned his taste buds. Shinishi was surprised at this reaction from Elna and said that there was absolutely no way that the meat could taste that bad. He then pointed his finger at her while stating that the problem must have been the salt, so she replied saying that he might be a little right about that. But that still wasn't the point. Mainly, she was referring to how he had cooked only the meat. She didn't believe that what Shinishi had done that morning in the kitchen could even be considered as cooking. She then mentioned to him that she would be the one taking care of the cooking from there on out. So in the next couple of moments, she went on grind and diced several ingredients for a delicious pot of soup. So in less than an hour, she was done preparing the soup and had served it for Shinishi in a bowl while stating that it was a herbal dried meat soup. Shinishi then took a slurp in of the soup and was amazed at just how delicious it was. He added that the tender salt spreading over the tongue in combination, and at the same time, it had some tingling black pepper which made for a really tight aftertaste. And yet, the herbs brought the quality up to the next level. Shinishi began to have a red blush on his face as he ate the soup and Elna noticed this and subsequently asked whether everything was okay. Shinishi didn't reply this immediately just went on to slurp the soup. And after he was done, he stretched the bowl in her direction remark saying that it was very delicious and simultaneously let her know that he wanted another bowl. Then with a very tired look on Elna's face, she replied to him saying that the soup had already finished and also informed him that he had already taken four bowls and just assumed that would have been enough for him already, for which Shinishi was upset at the hearing of. Then with a shy blush look on her face, she asked him whether he would like for her to prepare some more for him since he appeared to like it so much. After hearing this, Shinishi had held her shoulder in one arm and let off a bright smile in her direction, so at that point, Elna had been successfully rizzed up by him, so she went on to ask him to back and that he was way too close to her face. So in the next moment, Shinishi had rolled over onto his bed all of a sudden and Elna wondered what had made him do that, but soon decided to follow his lead and take a nap as well. Then as Shinishi laid in his bed, he recalled that his current goal was to escape this area, 
but the ultimate goal was to secure a stable life in this new world. He also acknowledged that in order to live peacefully in this parallel universe, he would have to think about exactly what he would do when he got out of there. The next morning, Shinishi had woken up and immediately clenched his fist, and as he did this, he realized that his body felt a lot lighter than its usual. He then proceeded to take off his shirt and simultaneously noticed that he had gotten ripped and went on to admire his newfound muscular physique. He further went on to grunt really loudly which had woken Elna up who immediately asked him what the hell he was doing and further stated that he was the reason that she never got some peaceful sleep. After a few seconds, she had calmed down and asked him what he was actually doing in front of the mirror. He then flexed his muscles in a corny action figure pose while telling her to check out his body and see just how much it has grown, for which she replied saying that she didn't want to see any of that. Simultaneously, she urged Shinishi to put on some clothes, but just then, Elna had clenched her own fist and noticed that she had grown a little herself. She then instantly assumed that it was most likely the effects of the holy water they had drank. Shinishi then guessed that hold an effect that reflects the experience earned in a short time onto the body. So from that logic, Elna had presumed that because Shinishi had fought the orc, he must have grown a lot stronger than her. Elna then sat on the bed and with a bright look on her face, she stated that this wasn't the result she was hoping for. But it wasn't that bad after all. Meanwhile, Shinishi wondered if there would be a change in their statuses, so he decided to use his appraisal skill on Elma. After he did that, banner had appeared which displayed all the major information about Elma. Shinishi took a look at the banner and was shocked to see that she was 19 years old. Meanwhile, Elna sat on the couch and mentioned that she would love to live in the empty house they currently were in, but she just couldn't help but wonder if someone had previously lived there, for which Shinishi agreed and said that they both would definitely need to investigate a bit more. Then as they both walked around the house, Shinishi wondered why there were neither any bathrooms nor bedrooms in the house, and just then, he had stumbled upon yet another secret door. So Shinishi further reasoned that for there to be a hidden door inside a hidden room, it must mean that the person who formerly lived there was an awfully careful person. He then went to wonder exactly who would want to live within a dangerous maze that already had over 20 floors. They both wandered a little deeper and were happy to see that there was a bed and also a toilet in the room that they had entered. Just then, Elma had drawn Shinishi's attention and urged him to take a look at something. Then in the next moment, she had rushed towards him with a book in hand and Ha subsequently mentioned to him that it was a book from a really great sorcerer named Moore. Shinishi was confused as to who that was, so she went on to explain that he was a legendary sorcerer that lived approximately over 1,000 years old. She also added that he was known as the Great Sage and at the same time, his legend was well known throughout the world. Some of his great achievements included him single-handedly stopping the terrible world war and also defeating monsters that threw the world into a state of panic and emergency. Simultaneously, there was an endless amount of good things that he had done, so he was basically recognized as some sort of superhero. However, eventually, Moore began to feel old age kicking in. And one day, he had disappeared at the border, and the book she held appeared to have been written five years after Sorcerer Moore's disappearance. Shinishi understood all this and considered it to be a little strange that there was a book about a person who had gone missing. So in that moment, it had now become to Elna that the hidden house they had found belonged to the sorcerer Moore. So with a dizzy look on Elna's face, she remarked saying that it was a true honor being able to live in the great sorcerer's house. Just then, Shinishi picked up a paper on the floor and couldn't believe that he had stumbled upon a map of the maze. So in spirit of joy, he had unexpectedly grabbed Elna and joyfully mentioned that he had just found a map to the maze. So with that, he would be able to find a way to escape to the surface. After Shinish's happy spree had worn off, he noticed that Elna's face had gotten awfully red and asked her what was wrong, for which she replied with an even redder blush on her face saying that it was all his fault. So having all that in mind, they went on to move further down the maze. Shinishi then wished to reconfirm from Elna on whether it really said that there was a field on the 21st floor, for which she positively confirmed. Meanwhile, Shinishi reasoned that at this rate, they were going to run out of food before escaping. He also reasoned that Sorcerer Moore must surely have been really self-sufficient, so he believed that it must be quite worth them searching any further. As they continued to move, Elna wished to know where exactly Shinishi came from. She wished to know this because she noticed that he spoke a different language and his common knowledge was quite unfamiliar. So he almost instantly replied saying that he came from a quite far place that she definitely wouldn't know about. She thought of this statement from Shinishi to be quite interesting. She also added that she worked as an adventurer. She had a feeling that Shinishi might be a little confused as to what that might mean so she went on to explain that it was a job where she earned rewards by fighting either monsters or demons or even both. 
So with that being said, this meant that she was a freelance adventurer that specialized in carrying luggage. So with a smile on Chinish's face, he went on to say that if qualifications and knowledge weren't required, then him becoming an adventurer would sound like an excellent idea. So at that moment, Elna had turned towards him and said that if that was the case, it would be a good idea for them to form a party. Then with yet another blushy smile, she suggested in their party, Shinishi would handle the close-range fighting while she would handle the long-distance fighting. So having that in mind, she believed that their party would be able to stop absolutely anything. And in the next moment, she had hugged Shinishi while stating that she was really grateful that she had finally made a friend. Shortly after, they had finally arrived at the stairs, so subsequently, Elna remarked saying that she was a bit tired, so she suggested that it would be best if they were to take a break just for the moment, and at the same time, she also reasoned that if they were to go further down, the monsters that they would encounter would only get stronger. But in response to that, Shinishi had told her to stop being silly and also reminded her that they needed to get food very desperately. He further added that if they didn't get food, at that rate, their breakfast the following morning would be salt soup. As they were just about to enter the unknown door, Elna was surprised at Shinish's boldness and went on to ask him how he wasn't scared in such a situation like that. So he replied saying that it's not that he wasn't scared, it was just that he was quite desperate to live. So in the next moment, they had walked into the door. And to their surprise, they found themselves in a very broad forest and went on to wonder whether this was still part of the dungeon. As they wandered this strange land, they stumbled upon some fruits handing from a tree. So Shinishi went on to ask whether it would be safe for them to eat those fruits, for which she replied saying that she wasn't all too sure because she had never seen this fruit before in her life. Shinishi being as curious as ever had jumped up and onto the tree all in attempt to get a piece of that fruit. So eventually... He had gotten up there and gotten a piece and subsequently taken a bite out of it. And in the same moment he sunk his teeth into it. He had widened his eyes in amazement of how rich the taste was. He didn't wish for Elna to get in on any of it. So he proceeded to lie to her about it by saying that it had some really deadly poison in it. So he has advised her to stay away from it. But somehow, Elna instantly knew that our boy was capping because she observed that he was eating it as if it was extremely delicious. Then in the next moment, Elna had gotten a piece for herself and took a bite of it, after which, she had held her cheeks while stating that the fruit was really sweet and delicious. Just then, Shinish's appraisal banner had appeared once again informed him that this delicious fruit was known as the fruit of the phantom tree. He informed Elna of this, and after hearing it, she immediately assumed that it was a tree that Sorcerer Moore had planted. As they moved on, Shinishi noticed some weeds in a field, so he went on to search even further and had discovered a massive plant known as a decor. So with no time to waste, he had uprooted it from the ground, once Elna had seen just how massive the decor was, so acknowledged it and subsequently asked where it had been growing. He then replied saying that it had been growing in a spot nearby. He narrated that he was apparently just pulling out some weeds from the ground and the giant decorn has appeared out of nowhere, at first. Elna was a bit confused at the manner which pronounced the decorn. Just then the appraisal banner had appeared yet again and informed Shinishi that he was the wrong pronunciation. It also informed him that the decorn was a plant with a light taste and also contained a large amount of water. Shinishi subsequently acknowledged that this was quite the pleasant miscalculation because these diacorns they had gathered would be more than enough to secure their food needs for the moment. But at the same time, he was aware that it was going to be a real pain in the ass for them to have to look for vegetables all the time. He then suggested that they make a field in that open space, so that they would be able to harvest vegetables there, vegetables that only they would be able to eat. Elna instantly thought of this to be a pretty good idea, and similarly proposed that they create a fence to properly make a field all for which Shinishi had agreed to. Shinishi subsequently reasoned that it would be a small field just for the both of them, but at the same time, it was a large aspiration. He further decided that they would start steadily from there, and also acknowledged that if they were to quit, that'll be the day that they'll escape to the surface. But as of that moment, Shinishi was aware that his most immense obstacle at the moment was the monsters, so he knew that they needed to be more aware of their surroundings. So he suggested to Elna that they both went over into the scary-looking forest that was nearby. And as expected, Elna initially refused to go along with it. But in response to this, Shinishi had proceeded to tease her by saying that he already assumed that it would be so difficult for a useless beginner sorceress like herself, and as expected, she had taken the bait and further stated that she was going to show him the true strength of a first-class beginner-level sorcerer, for which Shinishi was glad to hear. In the next couple of moments, they had gone into the forest and begun to explore, so subsequently, 
Elna had bent over and drawn his attention to something that she had discovered. Shinishi went over there and witnessed a huge vat of mushrooms and went on to ask Elna why they were so many, for which she replied saying that these were cured mushrooms. They were extremely high-grade mushrooms that were rumored to cure wounds in an instant. She then further assumed that it must have been more who had raised them. She subsequently reasoned that if they were able to sell them, she would be able to buy as many clothes as she wanted. After he had heard this, Shinishi reminded her that she might have forgotten one key factor which was that they still both couldn't escape to the surface, for which she acknowledged. So in the next couple of moments, she had dragged her away from there because he knew that there were more important things that he needed to work for. Just then, they arrived at an incredibly old-looking tree for which Shinishi assumed was about a thousand years old. Elma then remarked saying that it appeared to be alive since to it was still bearing fruits. Just then, Shinishi's appraisal banner had appeared above him and informed him that the fruits that were hung above his head were called barm fruits, which were fruits from a barm tree and was capable of sharpening all five senses. So in the next moment, he had plucked it from the barm tree and subsequently analyzed its nature. After a thorough analysis, he was surprised to see that the barm fruit was always just a regular orange. Once Elna had seen this, she immediately told Shinishi not to hog it all and give her some as well. She took a bite of it and remarked saying that she might like this one more than the peach because it apparently gave her a refreshing feeling. Just then, Shinishi had a feeling which was so intense that he had to hold his forehead, and in the same moment, he was able to detect that he had suddenly received an enhancement of senses. To him, it was as if he had experienced his consciousness from beyond a miniature garden. He also added that he could feel the breath of all living things in the area. It was almost as if he were experiencing super senses. At the same time, Elna was also experiencing these senses and remarked saying that it felt kind of weird. Just then, Elma had given off a disturbed facial expression, for which Shinishi had observed. So it had now become obviously to them both that they both sensed that they had been surrounded. Elma then added that judging from their breathing, she assumed that they were about 20 enemies coming toward them, and from the look of things, running away wasn't even an option for them. Then in the next moment, Shinish's appraisal banner had appeared and informed him that the incoming enemies were creatures known as kobolds, which was a beast that had a dog-like head and also a very ferocious nature. So after reading the appraisal, he was able to understand that the creatures were named kobolds. So Elna then stated that she knew that from the moment she had seen them and more importantly, advised him to focus on his attack. She further stated that she was going to make them flinch for a moment. So during that time, she urged him to try his best to take out as many of them as he could. Subsequently, she had brought out her staff and held it to the sky and made use of a technique known as stun flash. So after that attack, Shinishi had drawn his sword and proceeded to kill the incoming kobolds, after he had killed a whole barrage of them. He remarked saying that his body felt quite light and with his current mood, he felt as if he could keep on defeating many more. Just then, a giant kobold had appeared and in that same moment, he had picked up a scary aura and went on to ask Elna exactly what the hell that was. In the subsequent moments, Shinishi proceeded to struggle with the giant kobold, and just as things continued to get heated up, Elna sent a fireball attack with her staff, which in turn had made things a lot more heated, as they continued to fight. Shinishi warned Elna to be careful saying that this wasn't just any ordinary kobold. Then out of nowhere, it had launched a fireball at him, for which Shinishi had dodged but was still a lot surprised that it was capable of using magic. Then in the next moment, Elna had made use of her stub flash attack which had temporarily blinded it. Elna then notified Shinishi that the monster currently couldn't see, so she then went on to drag him to a safer location. Once they reached this location, Shinishi began to recall all that had happened and acknowledged that he had currently let his guard down. This was quite hard for him to believe because he had been rather confident after he had strengthened his body and gotten proficient with a sword. And after he had defeated the herd of kobolds, he had become a Tengu, which was frustrating for him, but he couldn't really do anything about it because he had lost anyway. Elna then proceeded to call him a dumbass for not knowing that there were monsters that could use magic. Furthermore, she acknowledged that he had taken a blow from its flame bomb, so she then remarked saying that it was an absolute miracle that he was still alive. Simultaneously, Shinishi was a hit confused as to what a flame bomb was and Elna noticed that, so she further explained that it was an intermediate level fire magic skill that packed enough punch to blow off one of his limbs. After hearing this, Shinishi had acknowledged the severity of the situation, so he then thanked Elma because he knew that if she weren't there, he would have died, for which she replied saying that it wasn't a problem since they were friends after all. Meanwhile, Shinishi was pleased at the fact that he had acknowledged him as her friend, so he then decided that it would be a good idea for him to do more to earn more of her trust. 
He then stated that from there on out, he would be counting on her. Elna then had a smile on her face and asked her why he had said that all of a sudden. However, she was still pleased to hear it, so she subsequently replied saying that he was looking forward to working together with him. Just then, this conversation they had just had reminded Elna about the cure mushrooms that she had grabbed from the field they had visited earlier. She then shoved it into his mouth against his will and eventually, he had fully swallowed it. And within the next few seconds, Shinishi noticed that his wounds appeared to have all healed and immediately realized that it was the work of the cure mushrooms. She added that she was hoping to use them to buy as many clothes as she wanted. But since they couldn't get up there, she believed that she might as well put them to good use. In the next few minutes, Shinishi mentioned that they were done exploring for the day and subsequently suggested that they go back to the hidden house. He said as he leaned against the wall, and in the next moment, he had unlocked yet another secret door which he and Elna had fallen through. Once they had landed, the area they were in appeared to be quite dark, but Elna had using use of some lighting magic to give the room a bit of luminance, and the moment that the room had been lit, Shinishi found himself to be in a quite awkward position as he was staring straight into Elna's skirt. However, in response to this, Elna had kicked Shinishi in the face, and in next moment, and with a bright blush on her face, she remarked saying that she really wondered what this place was. At the same time, she noticed that it wasn't even marked on Moore's map. However, in the midst of all this, Shinishi had said that they both didn't really have much of a choice than to go further down. So after a few minutes of walking, they were totally and utterly shocked to witness an entire pile of dead bodies. Shinishi had gone a little closer to them and from the feeling of the skin, he was able to deduce that the bodies of those people hadn't decomposed yet. Then with a quite serious look on Elna's face, she remarked saying that she had once heard a tale of dead bodies disappearing in dungeons before, so she just assumed that this was the real reason for it. At the same time, Elna couldn't believe that the dungeon itself has gathered the dead bodies. This statement took Shinishi by surprise, so at first, he assumed that it was the maze that had been gathering these dead bodies. But Elna then responded by saying that it wasn't monsters that were doing it. In fact, she herself didn't know how exactly things were going on but she just assumed that it must be really convenient for the dungeon. So subsequently, Shinishi had gone down on one knee and proceeded to scavenge off the dead bodies. Once Elna had seen this, she went on ask Shinishi what the hell he thought he was doing, for which he replied saying that he couldn't really call it scavenging, but he was doing it because there appeared to be a lot of useful stuff there. At this moment, Elna had understood his thought process and immediately urged Shinishi to stop scavenging the dead because she thought of it to be quite shameful. Shinishi then raised his fingers and did some air quotes while mentioning that they would just be borrowing some things. He then brought out corpses who somehow had a smile on its face and mentioned that the corpses were giving him permission with the smile on its face. But Elna knew that was obviously a lie because its eye was just popping out. Putting that aside, and with a smile on Shinishi's face, he stated that there was still a ton of stuff that they didn't have. So if it was for the purpose of escaping this place, then this wasn't really the best time to be talking about likes and dislikes. About half an hour later, Shinishi acknowledged that he had gathered so many things that his backpack had gotten so packed. And furthermore, he acknowledged that they had now obtained salt and sugar as well as spices and coffee at the same time. They had obtained dried meat and bread, which she had really wanted. He then held his hands together and stated that as a way of showing gratitude from where he was from. They said a prayer to honor and mourn the dead, for which Elna understood and stated that she was going to do the same. Then after they had said this prayer, Elna had mentioned that she was feeling quite hungry, for which she also added saying that they should both just hurry up and head home for dinner. Shinishi was a tad surprised that she had called it a home at first but shortly supposed that they could call it that because that warmth was something that he recognized from a long time ago. The thought of this had made Shinishi remember a very precious memory of his. It started off with a younger version of Shinishi's son and his wife telling him to hurry up or else he would be late for school. Then in the next moment, we observe a version of Shinishi sitting down at a table having some breakfast with his wife. In subsequent moments, Shinishi's wife had asked him what was up with him because she had noticed he had been rather active that morning. Shinishi then responded saying that it was because she had scolded him so much previously for the fact that he wasn't going to be seeing his family for the next three days. He then remembered the fact that she was going to Atami with her parents. He subsequently apologized for not being able to join her because of her work. He also asked her to send his regards to both his father-in-law and mother-in-law, for which she agreed to and also informed him that had left his dinner in the fridge for him. Just then, Shinish's son had appeared, and for some reason, he had been calling him by his actual name, and the moment Shinishi had seen him, 
he had told him to remember not to cause too much trouble for his mother while he was gone, for which he had agreed to with a bright smile on his face. However, at that moment, he still happened to call Shinishi by his name, so subsequently, Shinishi had reminded him that he was his father, so it was totally normal to call him dad or something. Following that, Shinishi's wife had called the boy by the name Naoki and told him that they were already late, and weren't going to be able to make it in time. Owing to that, Naoki waved at Shinishi, and had bid him farewell. Apparently, this was a typical winter day in the Tanaka household while Shinishi was still about 35 years old. Then after his wife and son had left, he began to run around his apartment building and began to question whether his life was a lie or not because at a point, he was told that his family had gotten into a car accident, and by the time he had made it to the hospital, they were already dead. Just then, and back to the real world, Shinishi had just woken up from a nap and had realized that all that had just played out was nothing but a simple dream. Then in the next moments, Shinishi was seen building a fence for the field that he and Elna had discovered. After this fence had been finished, he acknowledged that it was all thanks to the fact that they had found a saw and hammer in the hidden house's storehouse. Then as Shinishi stood over his fence and admired his hard work, Elna had given a cry for help because some form of chickens had surrounded her. So with no time to waste, Shinishi drew his sword and proceeded slice off the necks of the chickens. After this had been done, his appraisal banner had appeared this species was famously known as a rabbit chicken, which was basically the same as a normal chicken but it was just that it had some long ears. Elna then sat on the floor and thanked Shinishi for coming to her rescue. Shinishi accepted the thanks but still went on to inquire about why the rabbit chickens had attacked her so suddenly, for which she replied saying that they had their nest near the tree, so she had somehow angered them for getting caught while plucking some. Shinishi understood this and just advised Elna not to get caught next time. Then in the next couple of moments, Shinishi stated that he was feeling kind of hungry, so Elma then replied saying that he should just wait a little for she would soon start preparing lunch. At that point, Shinishi felt a little bad for always making her cook, so he thought of it to be a good and kind gesture to go out and pick some herbs while she cooked. Then as he picked, he realized that there were a few things that he had learnt that week. It appeared that the plants within the maze grew even without being watered. Furthermore, they grew at an abnormally fast rate. They both didn't know why that was, but within a week, the little buds had grown into blooming flowers which were almost ready to beat flowers, and thanks to that, had been slowly increasing. About an hour later, Elna had finished preparing lunch, so she had called Shinishi to come and eat, and as he stuffed his face, he remarked saying that the food was really delicious and also added that Elna should have chosen to become a chef instead of a sorceress. Speaking of which, Shinishi had asked Elna why she had chosen such a dangerous profession of an adventurer. In the next moments, he had replied saying she just never really gave up on her dream. Ever since she was little, she had always wanted to be a great sorceress, so she thought that it would only be natural to become an adventurer. She then looked down at the ground and stated that becoming an adventurer was a shortcut to becoming a great sorceress. A great sorceress was the nickname for someone who was recognized as the strongest being. So from what had been said, Shinishi understood that meant that she wanted her true strength and name to be widely known, so for that reason. Elna stated that she had really high hopes for Shinishi as her partner. Then with disturbed look on his face, he stated that he was a little worried that she already relied on him a lot for almost everything. So putting that aside, Elma brightly stated that the area they had come to take their lunch had a really nice aesthetic, so she then suggested that they both should occasionally come there to have a picnic. Shinishi thought of this statement to be quite funny because to him, almost every day was a picnic. Elma then clarified by saying that what she was trying to say was to not have it at the plantation, but she wished to go to an open field where they could relax to have a meal, for which Shinishi replied saying it sounded like a good idea and would do exactly that if they had the opportunity to. About an hour later, they both had visited the room filled with dead bodies yet again, but Shinishi had noticed that there weren't really any new corpses. So because of this, Elna had suggested that they both search from the bottom. So after they had done that for a while, Shinishi had successfully borrowed a small knife which he believed would be very useful to him. Just then, Shinishi had spotted a cloth high up on the wall, so he went on to ask Elna whether she was able to make that cloth that was up there drop with her magic for which she had replied saying that she could certainly make that drop for him. But she felt that it would be much easier for her if she were to climb to the top of the pile. But as she climbed, Shinishi had a pleased look on his face because he had yet again gotten a wonderful view from the inskirts of Elna's skirt. Then shortly after, she had reached the top of the pile. She had made use of her fireball attack all in attempt to make the mantle fall down. 
however, after she had sent a fireball right on target to it. The fireball happened to have disappeared. Elna was a bit confused as to why this was happening. So being unaware of the reason, she had decided to just try again. After this had continued to happen, Shinishi had just deduced that Elna's magic was somehow being nullified. But Elna thought of that idea to be utter bullshit because she was only aware of equipment that weakened magic, but didn't think of there to be anything out there that could totally nullify magic. Following that, Elna had asked Shinishi why he was even so interested in that old rag in the first place, but he didn't give a reply to this and just went on to continue throwing random things at it all in attempt of bringing it down. Then in the next moment, he had thrown a really large shield up in the air, and fortunately for him, it had hit the cloth right on target and had fallen right into Shinishi's hands shortly after. However, as Shinishi held it in his hands, he instantly noticed that he couldn't appraise it. But in the next moment, a banner had appeared above him and subsequently informed him that the owner of the mantle had died, and further asked him whether he now wished to take full possession of it. As Shinishi accepted it, he began to reason that he had just received a really incredible item. In the next few seconds, he had put on the mantle, and as he wore it, he was marveled at just how wonderful it was. Subsequently, Elna wondered if it was just some kind of magic tool that he had just never heard about. Shinishi was confused as to what a magic tool was, so Elna went on to explain that a magic tool was a tool that a sorcerer creates. She also added that she thought of it to be a good idea to use that term to refer to things such as unique equipment that had been gotten from the stove. In the following instances, Elna had taken a clearer look at how hideous the mantle looked on him, so just went on assumed that he just had absolutely no fashion sense. She was so upset by this that she attempted to use her magic to throw a flame bomb at him. However, she had tears in her eyes at the realization that she still couldn't use any intermediate level magic skills. This thought made her further wonder when she would ever be able to graduate from being a beginner level sorceress. Shinishi then told her to calm her ass down, but more importantly, he found it to be quite concerning that she had just attempted to cast a magic spell on him. In that instant, she then reminded him that he was taking peeks of her surprisingly curvy body while she was taking a shower and stated that was the reason why she had done it. Once Shinishi had heard this, he immediately acknowledged what a dirty scumbag he was and mentioned that the fact that she had attacked him was now justified. The situation had gotten far too awkward, so he decided to change the subject. So in subsequent moments, he suggested that they both head over to the forest. Elna then replied saying that she was okay with going there again to search there again but she didn't plan on getting her ass kicked by those cobbled variants again. Shinishi then let off a light chuckle and stated that there was absolutely no need to worry because he had learnt some new skills and also gotten a lot stronger. And in addition to that, he had prepared two secret weapons, and with that, he had an excellent feeling that they weren't going to lose anymore. Being curious as hell, Elna had asked Shinishi what exactly this magic weapon was, for which he replied saying that according to the map, there appeared to be a temple near the forest, so this time they would be looking for that area. Right as they were talking, Elna had a suddenly widened her mouth at the sight of a really cool dagger that he had brought out from his pocket. Shinishi sensed that Elna was shocked at the sight of it, so he went on to explain that it was one of his secret weapons that he had mentioned earlier. Apparently, it was his original technique called Magic Sword. He then went on to narrate that a while back, he had elaborately thought of a way to create it, and then after a few days, it had finally completed. Shinishi had chiseled a placeholder into the sword handle and then inserted a magic stone there. He also added that he is currently having a wind attribute magic stone inserted, however, he could remove it and switch it out with a different magical attribute. Meanwhile, Elna was absolutely stunned to hear this because magical weapons were incredibly difficult to make and weren't something that a measly amateur would be able to make in a day or two. But Shinishi had somehow been able to make it, which was why he was shocked. In the following moments, Shinishi mentioned that they were about to enter the kobold's territory, so at the same time, he urged Shinishi to stay alert. In that area, as usual, there were a ton of mushrooms growing there. Just then, a red cure mushroom had caught Shinishi's. He then took a bite of this red mushroom, and after he had sunk his teeth into it, he remarked saying that it was quite delicious even though it stung his tongue a bit. However, he did think that it added a bit of accent to it. Elna then mentioned that she had been able to pick more mushrooms. So in the next moment, Shinishi suggested that they had a mushroom hot pot for lunch that day, for which Elna had agreed to with a bright smile on her face, and then said that if that was the case, then they should go and look for some herbs. A few minutes later, as they continued to search for the herbs, the appraisal banner had appeared and informed him that a mysterious herb that he had stumbled upon was called Yamajin. Shinishi understood that in this world, the herbs were called Yamajin, 
but in his old world, he recognized them as mugworts and after he had stared at them for a while, he realized that there was no mistaking them because he recognized the unique smell that it had, after which he had spotted another herb he recognized as warren by, but in this world, it was known as eagle fern. After he had gathered the necessary herbs, he then began the cooking process, so subsequently he narrated that to prepare the mushroom hot pot, he would need to place mugworts and salt in boiling water for about a minute, then he would remove the grime that was visible in the water. As for the eagle fern, he would need to scrape off the surface hairs and then sprinkle some wood ashes and salt. Next, he was to place the ashes inside the boiling water, and once it was submerged, they would have to wait for it to cool down, and then he would be able to remove the grime. However, Elna had a pea-sized brain, so she didn't understand a single word that he had said and further wondered why and how he knew all of that. He then explained that he knew this because both his grandfather and mother lived in the mountains, and apparently, they both used to teach him how to pick wild plants. So after he had narrated this, he supposed that he would just hunt a rabbit chicken on our way home because a hot pot without meat wouldn't be right. After hearing this, Elna agreed with him that he had a point, so she further suggested that they should eat a whole lot that day. As they continued to walk, Elna had held her ears and stated that she could hear the cobbled variant's voice as well as a little child crying. Shortly after, they realized that the child was near the barm tree, so they hurried there and hoped that they would be able to make it in time. Once they had reached the location and saw the little girl with elf ears in trouble, Shinishi first of all urged Elna to throw an attack at it for which she gave a positive response and subsequently made use of her magic to throw a fireball attack at it. Shinishi then followed it up with a sword slash, but the kobold had swiftly dodged it. At this point, it was obvious to Shinishi that his regular sword wasn't going to do that much damage, so he decided that it was time for him to bring out his second secret weapon. So in the next moment, Shinishi had brought out some sort of spinning contraption which was known as a bolas, and Elna was surprised to see that was her secret weapon. To follow his previous attacks up, he had used his bolus to launch an attack on it. Shinishi had successfully landed a blow, and from that, he believed that the kobold was in pain. However, he had just been fooled. He then gave Elna a signal by calling out her name and in the next moment, the kobold had gotten hit with an electric paralyzed attack. Then after a few seconds, Elna remarked saying that the kobold was trying to overcome the paralysis, so she then urged Shinishi to do his best and hurry up and defeat it. While it had been paralyzed, he decided that he was going to make use of a lightning magic stone to slay him. Then following that attack, Shinishi had made use of his acupuncture push technique and threw some knives at the kobold's obvious pressure points. After he had done this, he realized that the kobold was vulnerable to the acupuncture push, so he then decided that he didn't really have much better choice than to kill it now, otherwise, he would have to fight it when it was even stronger. So in summary, he knew that this was his last chance. So in this dire moment, Shinishi had launched an attack at the kobold, but in response to that, the kobold was able to launch a fiery attack of his own to Shinishi. But in that moment, Shinishi was surprised as to why the fire hadn't burnt up as a result of the flame attack. But putting that aside, he soon decided to take his next attack with all his might, then in the subsequent moments, he had struck the kobold, and by the time he knew it, the beast had fallen to the ground. Shinishi then sat on the ground and was in pure disbelief that he had somehow managed to defeat such a formidable opponent, and at the same time, he also wondered why the kobold's attack from earlier hadn't burnt him up. He then looked at his body and went on to wonder whether it was because of mantle that he had put on. Then in that moment, Elna had inquired about the condition of the boy that had been attacked by the kobold. She had gotten a little closer to the boy and was able to see that she appeared to be hurt, so Elna then went on to give him a cure mushroom to eat all in hope that his wounds would get healed. Subsequently, Shinishi had arrived and had taken a look at the victim's crouch, so he was able to deduce that he was a boy. He then patted his head and remarked saying that they had barely escaped on this one, all with a bright smile on his face. In response to this, the boy just made a strange muttering sound which led Shinishi to believe that he couldn't talk. Just then, his appraisal banner had appeared yet again and informed him that this little boy was a holy beast werewolf, and apparently, he had been born as a child to a kobold, but since he had been abandoned, he had been roaming around as an orphan. Now that Shinishi had understood that the little boy was some kind of sacred beast, he went on to ask Elna whether she had any knowledge about this kind of thing, for which she calmly replies saying that a holy being was one that can ally to humans, but from what she had heard, they were referred similarly to gods in some countries. So in the next moment, Shinishi had turned to him and proceeded to give him an extremely hard stare, and as he stared at him, 
He shortly began to see an image of his son from his past life. Shinishi then had a sweat on his face and told the boy that they both just happened to be passing by and had come there to save him. He then also made it clear to the boy that they were not friends in any manner, after which he and Elna had turned their backs and walked away. Shortly after, he and Elna proceeded to search the forest and as they continued to search, Shinishi remarked saying that there were different kinds of mushrooms that grew around there. And apparently, the ones that Elna had held in her hands were a really rare kind of mushroom which was called Shidake and Makate. After hearing this, Shinishi remarked saying that Elna definitely did know a whole lot about mushrooms. So he went on to ask her whether she had lived in the mountains at a certain point, for which Elna then responded saying that wasn't quite the case because she had come from a country that had been covered by forests. She came from a different country than where the maze was located in the first place. So after she had said all this, Shinishi had asked Elna for the name of her country. In subsequent moments, she replied saying that it was called the Rogas Kingdom, which was a small country that was mainly populated with humans. Elma then stated that she was quite curious about where Shinishi had come from because he didn't know about the Rogas Kingdom, and he often sometimes said things that just didn't make any sense. Once Shinishi had heard her logic, he went on to reason that even if he said that he had gotten reincarnated here, she just wouldn't understand, so he just left her question unanswered for the time being. Then as they continued to walk, Elna stated that they would soon be arriving at the temple soon. She proceeded to walk a little further, but just then, a cobbled variant had jumped out of the bushes and went straight to launch an attack on Elna. At that point, Elna had totally let her guard down, so she believed that she was a goner at that point. But just then, the little werewolf boy that they had saved earlier had emerged from the bushes and proceeded to use his sharp claws to scratch the cobbled right across the face, after which... The kobold had laid dead on the ground. After the boy had defeated the kobold, he had fainted. However, Shinishi had been able to catch him just in time. And as he held him in his arms, he remarked saying that the boy appeared to be way too thin and just assumed that he must have collapsed as a result of malnutrition. At first, Shinishi offered the boy a balm fruit, but he had shook his head in rejection of it. So next, Shinishi HSD offered him a piece of dried meat, for which the boy proceeded to stuff his face with. As the boy ate the meat, Elna had noticed that he had taken quite a liking to them both, so in the next moment, she had asked Shinishi what he intended to do with the little boy. Shinishi thought about it for a while and subsequently decided that they would just take the boy along with them. He further reasoned that if he was given proper nutrition, he would most likely be a very valuable asset to them. However, Shinishi was still a bit worried about their food supply, but subsequently reasoned that they could just ration their food and figure it out some way. After this had all been agreed upon, Elna then asked Shinishi for what they would call the little boy because she reasoned that he should be given a name since he was going to be tagging along. So Shinishi thought about it for a while and then with a smile on his face, he had stated that he had decided on the name Piro, for which Elna thought to be a terrible name and further stated that he had absolutely terrible taste in names. Then as they continued to wander the forest, they had come across a weird tombstone which they first assumed to be some kind of structure of monument. Elma then remarked saying that she had formerly seen a building like that before, but couldn't make out exactly where she had seen it before. Shinishi then went down on one knee and read the tombstone. And just then, Shinchai's appraisal banner had appeared which was welcoming him to something that was known as Transfer Temple. And since Shinishi currently didn't have a transfer address, transferring for him wouldn't be possible. So in the next moment, Shinishi was confused as to what the banner had meant by transfer, and further went on to wonder whether it meant that he was going to fly somewhere or something. But just then, Elna's two brain cells had clicked she had just remembered that the building they are currently being in was the same as the one in the large maze entrance. Shinishi understood this and stated that this meant that there was currently another transfer temple on the surface. Elna then replied giving a positive response and subsequently added that she didn't really know why someone would make it. But despite that, it had been there for a really long time. Then in the next moment, Elna had approached Shinishi and was surprised to see what had been written on his appraisal banner. Shinishi then replied saying that he wasn't all too sure why but it appeared that the appraisal system had been sleeping up until a few moments ago and had just woken up. However, Elna now understood the situation and went on to state that since they didn't have any transfer points, they would have no choice than to head towards the surface through their efforts. Shinishi then went on to ask Elna whether she fully believed that they were entirely capable of heading towards the surface, for which she hesitantly replied saying it was entirely possible, but she still believed that it would be quite hard for them especially considering their current food supply. She was aware that they weren't going to get lost anytime soon because they were now in possession of the map. At the same time, 
She also acknowledged that they would need to increase their food supply to ensure that they had enough food to escape that place. A couple of moments later, they all were back at home and Elna was seen preparing some lunch for them all to eat. After she was fine cooking, she had asked Shinishi whether Piro was still sleeping, for which he replied giving a positive response and added that he appeared to be in a rather weakened state. However, it was still a mystery to them both why he had become so weak after showing so much power. They both went over to him as he slept and as they watched him. Elna noticed that there was something stuck in the side of his mouth, but she didn't know what it was, so she had kindly asked Shinishi to try appraising it so that they would be able to find out what exactly it was, all for which Shinishi had agreed to, so in the next moment, his appraisal banner had appeared and it had informed him that what was in Piro's mouth was a piece of red cure mushroom which was a poisonous mushroom that grows among regular cure mushrooms. And once Shinishi had seen this, he had realized that this might most likely been due to his misunderstanding from earlier. He then assumed that Piro must have seen him eating that red mushroom and then had gotten attacked by the kobold variant while he was suffering from the poison. So with all that in mind, he had asked Shinishi whether there was anything they could do about the poison that was currently running through Piro's veins. Then with a winky smile on her face, Elna had stated that he should just leave it to her and if it was something as little as this, she would easily be able to cure it with the aid of some magic. So in subsequent moments, Elna had held her staff and made use of some positive removal magic for which after she had done, some strange fluid has emerged from Piro's mouth which Shinishi was perplexed as to what it was. Elna then explained that it was just a lump of poison, which was what the poison in Piro's body looked like before it was removed. In hindsight, Shinishi never assumed that eating a poison mushroom would lead to all of this, and since Piro someone who used to live in the streets, he realized that he have TP sternly warn him next time. So in the next moment, Shinishi had asked Elna whether the red mushroom's poison was a slow-acting one for which she replied giving a negative response and subsequently stated that she believed that the symptoms would show up within a minute. After the poison had gotten out, Elna had prepared some food for them to eat, and the moment Piro had sat before the food, he had immediately tried to slurp it all down. However, it was a little too hot for him to handle at once, so he had expressed some discomfort while he was eating. Shinishi sensed that the food might have been a little too hot for him, so he urged Piro to eat it slowly rather than just rushing the food all at once. Following that, Shinishi had asked Elna to try her best to teach Piro some actual words. Elna then asked Shinishi why he wanted her to be the one that would teach Piro how to speak, for which he replied saying that it because he thought it would be a job that was best suited for him. After hearing this, Elna wished to make a deal with Shinishi which was that if she taught Piro to speak, once they reached the surface, he would have to buy her a set of new clothes at the town. So Shinishi then replied saying that if that was all that was all, there was, he was absolutely fine with it. Just as the issue of clothing had been brought up, Eln had asked Shinishi what exactly they would do about Piro's clothes, and the moment she had mentioned it, Shinishi had spat out the food in his mouth because he had totally forgotten about that. Then in subsequent moments, he recalled that they didn't really have any clothes for children at all because all the clothes they had found at the disposal area were all for adults. Helma then stated that she once had a part-time job at a tailor shop, and at the same time, she had found a needle from one of the bags they had found at the disposal area. She then added that if it was just one set of clothes, then she would be able to make it right away. She then told Shinishi to hold on for a while, and in the next moment, she had used the needle she found to stitch up a pair of clothes for Piro. Then after she was done, Piro had put it on and apparently, it had fit him like a glove. The next item they needed for him were shoes, however, that was the one thing that Elna couldn't make. Shinishi understood the situation and stated that if it were for small size shoes, they would just be able to find a pair from the disposal area. A few days later, Piro was seen pulling some weeds in the field, and apparently, he was able to speak and alert Shinishi that he had just finished pulling out the weeds, for which Shinishi had thanked him for. Meanwhile, Shinishi had acknowledged that slowly but surely, Piro had become able to say a few words, which was considered to be a remarkable growth. Just then, Elma had arrived with a chicken in hand and also with a smile on her face. She had informed them all that she had just slayed a rabid chicken, and immediately the rest of them had heard this, they had commended her for a job well done. Elna was really proud of this achievement, so she went on to explain that she had just aimed for where one of the chickens was, and at the same time, she had made use of her electric paralyze to render it immobile, and at that point, she was still in disbelief because she had never believed that she would be able to do this. Meanwhile, Shinishi had noticed that Elna as well had slowly but surely improved. 
He acknowledged that she had improved her physical abilities, but more importantly, she had become more adept at using magic. However, it was still obvious to Shinishi that they didn't have quite enough food to feed three mouths. Eskuo with that in mind, he had decided that they all should go on some hunting. About an hour later, they had begun their hunt, and almost immediately, they had spotted an animal which was known as a tiger bison, and was obviously carnivorous. However, in the next moment, Shinishi had taken it with a single slash. The fact that he had defeated it with a single slash was quite expected from Elma, and similarly, Piro stood at the sidelines and proceeded to cheer Shinishi as he fought. Then as Shinishi and Piro had gotten together, Elma had taken in a deep breath and noticed just how stinky they both were and subsequently decided that it was about time that they both had taken a shower. So in the next couple of minutes, Shinishi had prepared a bath for him and Piro to get into, and after the bath was ready, they both had jumped in and enjoyed themselves a little more than they were supposed to. And just then, Elna had walked in and observed this feat, so she went on to ask from where exactly they both had gotten their creativity from, after which, he had let Elna know just how great the bath had felt, Elma then understood this and went on to state that she was just going to try it out later. The next day, they all had suited up and set out on their mission to escape, and as they continued, he began to realize that it had been roughly two months since he had reincarnated into that world. And now, the time to head towards the surface had finally arrived, so as they stood ready for the journey, Elma had stated that it was now time for them to leave these twenty floors, for which Shinishi had nodded his head in concurrence. Just then, in the midst of all this talk, Piro was a bit confused about what was going on, so he went on to ask what the surface was, for which Elna had replied saying that it was a very bright and wide place. She further added that there were a lot of living things and mountains of delicious food there as well. The only thing that Piro had understood from what Elna had just said was the part about food, so he went on to repeatedly yell that he wanted meat for which Shinishi had also mentioned that he was looking forward to meaty dishes along the surface. Shortly after, Shinishi had informed them that they would soon be reaching the 19th floor, so in that same moment, he had urged the rest of them to eat a barm fruit to serve as a form of protection. Shortly after, they had reached the 19th floor and they had realized just how quiet it was. Just then, they had sensed that something was approaching. They turned their backs and saw a group of wolves running towards them. Just then, Piro had swooped out and mentioned that he was going to defeat them, so Elna and Shinishi should just leave it to him. Then in the next moment, Piro HSD made good use of his claws and had ripped the wolves to pieces. After this, Elna and Shinishi were surprised to see that in the blink of an eye, Piro HSD gotten the strength of over a hundred men. As they continued their journey, Shinishi had asked Elna whether they all were still on the right track for which she replied giving a positive response, while adding that there was no way that Moore's map was wrong. Just then, the ferocious Jack had walked up to him and the moment Shinishi had seen him, he immediately recognized him to be the Jack he had previously encountered. He then told Elna and Piro to get behind him. Then before they knew it, Shinishi had made use of his leg strengthening technique to launch himself forward, then to follow that attack up. He had used his sword to slice the Jack in half, for which Elna and Piro had observed and were equally impressed. Then at that moment, Shinishi was shocked to see that the once formidable enemy was no longer a worthy opponent for him anymore. After he had acknowledged this, he suggested that they all went up the stairs. Right before they left, Shinishi had begun to cut the jack up with a knife that he had in his pocket, and immediately Elna had seen this. She went on to ask him what the hell he was doing for which he was surprised at such a reaction because he had assumed that she probably couldn't wait for him to cut it up. With a surprised look on her face, she had let Shinishi know that felt disturbed about cutting it up because she believed that orcs weren't exactly food in the first place. She just the time she noticed that he didn't eat the cobbled variant because she just assumed that human-like monsters weren't food. Shinishi then replied to this statement by saying that wasn't quite the case because in reality, he just didn't eat the cobbled variant because he likes dogs. But if it were an orc, he would have been more than happy to eat it. Just then, a banner had appeared in front of Shinishi which informed him that he had just gotten a new skill that was known as pickup skill. Shinishi was totally dumbfounded at the sight of this. He then went on to ask Elna whether she knew what the pickup skill he had just gotten was. Elna then replied giving a negative response and also mentioning that this was the first time that she had heard of such a skill. Being curious as ever, he decided that he was just going to try it out on Elma. But as he had tried it, a banner had appeared which told him that he was unable to use the pickup skill on Elma. Shinishi was intrigued at the fact that it didn't work, and then admitted that he was quite interested learning more. But she guessed that there wasn't much that he could do for her at the moment. After this, however, Shinishi figured that they should be fine with the meat from the jack. Piro jumped for joy at the sight of more meat. 
but Elna had stated that she wouldn't be eating the jack meat. Just then, as they continued to walk, Elna had noticed a treasure box in the rear, judging from the fact that Shinishi and Piro didn't mention it. She assumed that they just hadn't seen it yet. She then thought of all the great treasures that could be in there and walked towards it with the mind that she was going to keep it all to herself. However, the moment she had gotten within a certain proximity of the treasure chest, it was discovered that it had teeth and had subsequently used these teeth to bite Elna's foot. After this had happened, she had let off a loud scream which drew the attention of both Shinishi and Piro, for which she had yelled Shinchai's name again and that he would come and help her. As Elna's foot was getting chewed on, Shinishi then got closer to it and went down on one and began to wonder whether it was some kind of monster treasure chest. However, after he had thought over it for a while, he had realized that this wasn't a monster treasure chest. Rather, it was a monster known as a mimic, and apparently, a mimic was a creature that camouflages as a treasure chest and attacked people. And in subsequent moments, Shinishi had acknowledged that this had happened to Elna because she was blinded by greed. In the next few moments, Elna continued to scream in pain, after which, and with mild tears in her eyes, she had informed him that there was a weak point on its back, so she then urged him to use his sword to stab that area. So with that information at hand, he had successfully stabbed the weak point, after which, the mimic had let go of Elna's leg, and shortly after, it had died. Piro had then run to Elna and given her a red cure mushroom because he assumed that she must have been somewhat injured. Following this incident, Shinishi acknowledged that its weak point was on its back, so it seemed that monsters had both special traits and weak points. Speaking of which, Elna had asked Shinishi whether he had tried using that skill that he had talked on monsters yet, for which he said he would give a try. As he tried, a menu had popped up which told Shinishi to choose the skill he wished to acquire from the mimic. So at that same moment, Shinishi widened his eyes and realized what huge dumbass he had been up until that point. He also realized that the skill did exactly as it said which was to pick up skills from others. The target probably needed to be dead before he could pick up skill, which was most likely why it had failed when he tried to use it on Elna because she was still alive. After all these realizations, he then let Elna and Piro that he was now capable of obtaining skills from dead things. At first, Elna yelled saying that had to be against the rules, for which he supposed that she could say that, but at the same time told Elna to keep it a secret between them both, then in the next moment, Shinishi had reached into the mimic's body, and once Elna had saw this, she immediately asked him what he hell he was doing, for which he replied saying that he was taking out its heart and liver. At first, Elna had pretended that she didn't want some, but sooner than later, she had given in to the temptation proceeded to stuff her face along with Shinishi and Piro. As they continued to move along the maze, Shinishi had acknowledged that the skill that he had received from the mimic was really helpful. Just then, Piro had yelled to alert them that something really smelly was approaching them, and subsequently, they had witnessed a giant centipede chasing three people down the path. Shinishi had appraised it and was able to realize that this monster was known as an ice centipede whose elemental attribute was ice. So at the sight of this, Shinishi and the others knew that they had help out in some way. Then in the next moment, Elna had made use of her electric paralyzed technique in an attempt to temporarily restrain the centipede. However, it was to no avail as the centipede had just given off a loud roar in response to it. Shinishi realized that Elna's magic wasn't having that much of an effect on it, and to make matters even worse, the centipede had used its ice to freeze Shinchai's legs to the ground. But as Elna continued to fight, she informed Piro and Shinishi that she was going to need their assistance. But at the same time, she was aware that Seb would need to do something about the ground in order for Shinishi to free himself. Subsequently, Shinishi had used his magic sword to emit flames which in turn had melted the ice and freed him. Meanwhile, the people who were being chased stood idly by and observed the whole scene, and at the same time, they wondered whether Shinishi was making use of magic weapon or not. Shinishi stood before the giant centipede, but right before he was able to react, Piro had jumped in and given the centipede a heavy punch, which in turn had saved Shinchai. Shinishi continued to utilize his flame skill against the centipede, and figured that his recent attacks appeared to have been really effective since it was an insect with the ice attribute. After this, he had mentioned to Elna and Piro he would desperately need their support. So with that, they all had worked together to defeat the ice centipede, and to finish it off, Shinishi HSD defeated it with a move known as Tanaka Fire. Once the centipede had been defeated, Piro had asked Shinishi about the Tanaka fire move he had used, for which he replied saying that it was his special move. Then as the centipede laid on the floor, Shinishi had once again made use of skill pickup technique to obtain some moves that he believed would be quite useful in battle. 
Meanwhile, the people that they had rescued stood in disbelief at the sidelines because he just couldn't believe that they were able to beat such a strong monster. The girl they were with then remarked saying she had noticed that Shinishi in particular was considerably skilled. The guy who was dressed in armor went on to introduce himself as Mikey who happened to be the leader of a group known as the Lorises. The girl among them was named Annie, and finally, the quiet boy was known as Coco. Shinishi then stated that it looked like they all were really ticked off by that monster, and to him, it didn't look like the type of monster that just randomly enjoyed chasing its prey. Mikey then mentioned that it was all his fault because he had slashed the centipede monster the moment he had seen it. Mikey then added that he believed that he could beat it, but unfortunately for him, his sword had snapped, and at the same time, Annie's magic wasn't all that effective because its attributes wasn't all too suitable for the job. Similarly, Coco couldn't fight because she just wasn't that good with bugs. Mikey then remarked saying that they were really lucky that they had arrived. In response to this, Annie then asked him to shut the fuck up and also mentioned that this was no time for her to be laughing because his sword was still broken and at the same time, there was absolutely no way that they were going to make it to the surface in the state they were currently were in. So after Shinishi who heard this, he subsequently suggested that they just came along with them. He further reasoned that there really shouldn't be any issues since they were heading to the same place. In response to this, Mikey had asked Shinishi whether he was sure about it, and at the same time stated that he would be really grateful for it. In that same moment, Shinishi had noticed that Elna was hiding from them, so he went on ask her what the hell was going on there. Shortly after, Elna had come out from hiding. Mikey had seen her and remarked saying tag even though she looked like trash. He was surprised to see that she was still alive. From the way they conversed with Elna, it was a little obvious that they had known her from somewhere. More importantly, Annie went on to ask Elna to tell her she didn't inform her about the job she had taken. Then with a little hesitant look on her face, she remarked saying that it was because she thought the rewards looked quite good, and at the same time because there wasn't much danger in the area. Annie thought of this statement from Elna to just be bunch of bullshit because she acknowledged that Elna had gone missing for over a month. However, in the next moment, Annie had calmed down and held Elma firmly and then let her know that she was really glad to see that she was okay and that she was also distressed about her, after which Elma had referred to her as Big Sis. Meanwhile, Shinishi acknowledged the fact that Elma had called Annie sister, which led him to believe that they were actual sisters. However, he couldn't really imagine them being blood-related, so he went on to wonder what exactly their relationship with each other was. Annie then went on to ask Elna whether she was the only one who had survived, and subsequently mentioned that the three of them were still actively investigating the case of the Dawn Rat because they wished to confirm if there were any other survivors. The fact that Annie had mentioned this made Elna sweat in remembrance of all the horrific events that had happened before she had met Shinchai. Annie observed that she was a little disturbed by the memories of what had happened, so she then mentioned that it was all fine and that she was just going to report to the guild that there was only one survivor. As they progressed to the fifth floor, all of a sudden, Elna had let off a rather loud scream, for which Shinishi had almost immediately inquired about. So with a scared look on her face, Elna had mentioned that there was a bug on top of her watermelons. Shinishi then took a closer look and noticed that the bug she referred to happened to be a tiny spider. Then in the next moment, Elna had smacked Shinishi across the face because he had gotten a little too close to her watermelons. This act of Elna's had made the spider fall off her chest. After it had fallen off, Shinishi had appraised the spider and discovered that it was apparently a species known as a solidarity spider which was extremely poisonous and moved in groups. Just then, they all had seen that there was a sudden alert for danger, so Shinishi had urged them all to get ready because he assumed the solidarity spider traveled in groups. A whole bunch of his friends were coming at him. Then as they saw the giant swarm of spiders approaching them, Annie had taken immediate action by making use of her needle rain technique. And to follow that up, Shinishi had made use of his ice breath technique that he had picked up from the ice centipede. After this attack had been successful, Shinishi and Annie acknowledged that they both had really compatible fighting style, so Annie then suggested that they formed a party together, for which Shinishi had remarked saying that it wouldn't be that bad of an idea. However, Elna didn't seem to be happy about it in the slightest. Once Annie had seen this reaction from Elna, she had chuckled and mentioned that she was just joking and also that she didn't mean to steal her little sister's friend. Elna had agreed with this and subsequently held Shinchai's arm while stating that she would never hand over Shinchai. This act from Elma had made Shinishi blush heavily. Then in the next couple of moments, Shinishi considered this to be a good chance to take some of the spider's skills, and after he had done this, he noticed that he had all of a sudden gotten some skills known as web generation and web creation. So having that, he had now become a bootleg Spider-Man and was able to shoot webs out of his fingers. After a while, they had gotten to the 10th floor, 
and apparently it had been three days since they left the hidden house. And thanks to the skill pickup, he had expanded his abilities. So with that in mind, they proceeded to go down the stairs until they had reached the fifth floor. And at this floor, they had begun to see several people. After this, they had continued to progress until they had finally reached the first floor, where they could hardly even spot any more monsters. And at the same time, were several more adventurers. And just then, Piro had informed Shinishi that he had seen the exit of the maze. They took a look outside and acknowledged just how spacious it was. So then at last... They had finally reached the surface world. Shinishi was relieved that he had finally made it out of the maze. So at that juncture, Mikey suggested that this was the point where they parted ways. Annie then stated that she and her team had to return quickly so that they would be able to report back to their guild. Annie further stated that the closest town from there was the town of Marna, so if Shinishi planned on forming a party, then he should head for the guild that was there. Shinishi understood this and went on to mention that they would just go towards that town if that was the case. He then shook hands with Mikey and let him know that it had been really fun traveling with them all, after which, he proposed that they met up again sometime. As they continued to walk, Elma had informed Shinishi that she had spotted a transportation temple. Just then, a banner had appeared in front of Shinishi and informed him that he had just reached a transfer point and subsequently asked him whether wished to transfer immediately. After seeing this, Shinishi just assumed that the banner was most likely referring to the temple that was near the miniature garden. So now with the aid of that transfer point, he realized that he could now return whenever he wished. Elma then asked Shinishi whether he ever intended to go back to the hidden house, for which he replied saying that he would go back after he had his fun on the surface. Elma thought of this to be absolutely ridiculous and went on to tell him that he should just live in the town. Shinishi then calmly replied, saying that when he had first got here, he thought he wanted to escape the maze as quickly as possible, but that hidden house he stayed in had absolutely nobody around. And at the same time, it had plenty of necessities stocked which made living there quite comfortable for him. He further mentioned that in a world where he didn't even know if the social security system existed, that hidden house was just too difficult for him to abandon. So with having all that in mind, Shinishi just told Elna that they should just slowly enjoy the surface while they were there. Moments later, they were seen walking through an empty field and Piro had remarked saying that the area was far too spacious. Then at the same time, Shinishi had said that this area was wholly different from the one where they had the miniature garden. Meanwhile, Shinishi had noticed that they had about for just about two hours now, so he then asked Shinishi for where exactly the town was, for which she replied saying that he would see it very soon. Shortly after, they had arrived in the town of Marna, and as Shinishi walked around the place, he was surprised that there was actually a town that wasn't all too far from the large maze. Thereafter, Elma had stated that this place was sometimes called an adventurer town since it was so close to the Mojito giant maze. Just then, Shinishi had spotted a strange pig and was confused as to what it was. So Elna went on to explain that it was known as a Mohican pig which was a very common livestock that was commonly eaten around that area. However, this was just as Shinishi had expected from this parallel world. Burr judging from the livestock. This parallel world was a bit different in his eyes. Immediately Piro had seen the livestock. He attempted to start eating them, but Shinishi had stopped him at the last moment and informed him that these goods were for sale, so he wasn't allowed to just go around and eat them. And shortly after, Shinishi had decided that it was about time that they headed over to the guild. About half an hour later, they had arrived at the local guild. Shinishi had remarked saying that there were an incredible number of adventurers there, and it was their intention to become one of them at the same time. As Elna had said that, he realized that the fact that a homeless person like himself was now about to become an adventurer was absolutely unbelievable. He then acknowledged that he was definitely going to keep his promise to Elna, but at the same time, he was aware that this was the best job for him since it was an occupation that he could do on his own. Shortly after, they had reached the receptionist's table, where she had given them both an application for adventurer registration for them to fill out. As Elna attempted to fill out the form, Elna began to think about what they would name their party, but soon realized that it would be too much of a hassle to try to think of one. So she urged Shinishi to think of one. At first Elna thought of some corny names such like Dragon's Claw and Dragon's Eye, but Shinishi then did well to let her know that those names were just trash, after which... He had suggested that they called their party homeless. Immediately Elna had heard this. She went on to yell at Shinishi because she thought of it be a really dumb name, for which he replied saying it was her fault for leaving it all up to him. So with that, the registration had been completed, and the party had been formed. 
In the next moment, the receptionist had handed them both their adventurer cards, after which, she explained to them both that every new adventurer started as a beginner rank adventure, and depending on their abilities, they would be able to advance towards the intermediate to master ranks. She also added that their rewards would increase as they progressed in the ranks. So after this had been mentioned, the receptionist wished them good luck as they bid her farewell. Then at that point, Elna was excited at the fact that they had now officially become a party, after which, she mentioned to Shinishi that they would take on a number of missions and make tons of money. Just then, Shinishi had noticed that the town was suddenly in a state of panic. A civilian then walked in and yelled to inform everyone that the Factus Dragon had appeared. At first, Shinishi took a look at it and asked himself what the hell that thing was, but after he stared at it for a while, it happened to resemble a large lizard-like monster. Apparently, since a long time ago, it would occasionally show up in that area. In fact, when it had appeared about 20 years ago, the town had more than 200 victims to Factus Dragon's name. And in that same moment, Mikey had appeared and went on to ask Shinishi whether he had ever heard about the Factus Dragon, for which he replied giving a positive response, which meant that Mikey didn't need to explain anything to him. Then at the next morning, Mikey had asked Shinishi and Elna to help take down that monster. Shinishi then told Mikey that he and Elna had had just become adventurers, so they both were newbies. Despite that fact, Mikey went on to tell them that the town of Marna currently lacked fighting power, and it was just their luck that all the adventurers that all the adventurers that stood a chance against the monster had left town. And at the same time, he knew that if the monster were to get into the town, it would be all over for them. Mikey then remarked saying that he was quite impressed when he witnessed him fighting that ice centipede from earlier. After that was said, he went on to ask Shinishi whether it would be possible for him to lend them a hand in this situation. Then at that moment, Shinishi reasoned that a whole lot of people were going to die, so he couldn't just sit idly by and watch that happen. Just then, Annie had remarked saying that she was against Elna joining the fight. Elna was surprised to hear her say such a thing, so she went on to inquire about what made her say that. Annie then explained that right from the time Elna was little up until now, she had only been able to use beginner level magic. So having that in mind, she doubted that she stood a chance in the fight. Elna then stated that her magic had improved since a long time ago, and at the same time, her time in the maze had made her a lot stronger. Annie then asked Elna to shut the fuck up and simultaneously told her that she was really concerned about her well-being. Elna then replied saying that it's not that she cared about her, rather it was just that she had always looked down on her. She further stated and vowed that she was going to become a great sorceress someday, for which Annie replied saying that she was just clinging on to one of her famous delusions of grandeur, after which she told Elna that it was about time she had a reality check. Before things could get out of control between the two sisters, Shinishi had restrained Elna from behind while telling her to calm down, after which, he said that they would help take down the monster, and furthermore, he had promised to keep Elna out of danger on the battlefield. However, in exchange for this service, Shinishi stated that the homeless party would receive all rewards before it would be split. Then in the next couple of moments, Shinchai, Elna and Piro ran down the street in search of this troublesome dragon. Piro then mentioned that the dragon was located at the front of the town, after which, he had urged them to hurry down to the gate. Meanwhile at the guild headquarters, it happened that there was a pending announcement from the guild to all the adventurers, which was to inform them about the mission about the elimination of the Factus Dragon. The letter further stated that the person or party that were to defeat the monster would be rewarded with 30 gold coins, and all those who assisted in fighting would be rewarded appropriately. Shinishi understood that this letter was just an attempt for the guild to stir up the spirits of the adventurers. Shinishi then mentioned to the others that if he ever thought that they were in danger, they would immediately withdraw. As they ran towards the dragon, Shinishi urged Elna and Piro to eat a balm fruit to serve as a form of protection. Now as he was face to face with the dragon, and he had figured that he would just activate all of his skills and finish this quickly, but all of a sudden, while he had used his acupuncture push technique, he noticed that the acupuncture spots on Elna's back were yellow instead of the usual color of red. However, he didn't have an opportunity to think about that because he had more important things to attend to. As the dragon roared, Shinishi jumped up into the air and went on to slash the dragon, but this time, it had been blocked. Shinishi landed on the ground and realized that it was far too big and at the same time, they were simply no match for it. Then in the next moment, Piro had jumped on top of the dragon and attempted to deliver some heavy blows to it. However, after he had delivered that punch, he happened to be stuck on top of the dragon. Shinishi and Elna observed this and subsequently let Piro know that they were going to get him down from there. 
Elma then threw a fireball attack which had landed directly on the dragon's face and in turn allowed Piro to come down from the top of the dragon. And after he had landed, Elma did well to inquire about Piro's condition. Meanwhile, Elma figured that this level of magic wasn't going to work against the dragon. But at the same time, she acknowledged that she had gotten a lot stronger, so she just decided that she was going to use a large magic spell that he could only cast once. So in subsequent moments, Elna had cast a convergence ball spell which let off an extremely chaotic explosion. However, even with that mighty explosion, the blast still wasn't enough to defeat the dragon. It was evident that Elna had used a large amount of her energy to cast that spell, because after she had cast it, she immediately fell to the ground with a shivering frame. Shinishi then called her name and told her that she was just making the dragon mad for no reason. He then thought of it to be a good idea for her to cast her electric paralyzed technique. Then while she was on the floor, and with tears in her eyes, she remarked saying that as a sorceress, she hated using sneaky magic like smoke screens and stuns, she swore to become a great sorceress so she wished to defeat the monster with head-on attacks. Just then, Shinishi noticed that the yellow spots on were glowing a little, and at the same time, some of them were disappearing. He then used his appraisal magic on them and was informed that these strange spots were known as healing acupoints. These were spots that normalized the flow of magic power and also allowed the user the ability to use intermediate and advanced level magic. Shinishi thought over this for a while, and if he were to assume that the appraisal results were correct, Elna might have incredible magic abilities, but she might just have been inflicted with some kind of sickness. Therefore, she wouldn't be able to manifest her natural powers. He further reasoned that if he were able to remove those spots with his acupuncture push technique, she would be able to harness her full power. So with no time to waste, Shinishi informed Elna about the current situation she was in, after which... He had mentioned that he would be able to handle it if he used his acupuncture push on the spots. At first, Elna was confused as to why he thought that his skill the target immobile would be able to get rid of her spots, for which he replied saying that he had heard that it had some healing effects. After Shinishi had said all this, Elna still couldn't wrap her head around the fact that her magic power had always been suppressed because of a pertaining sickness that she had. As they spoke, the Factus dragon had given off a loud roar which implied that there wasn't much time for them to think about this. So in the next moment, Shinishi had asked Elna what her decision was, for which she had replied saying that she definitely wanted to go through with it because this would be their only chance at defeating the monster. Right before he made use of his acupuncture push on Elna, he urged Piro to avoid looking in Elna's direction otherwise he might find what he would see to be displeasing. Elma then went on all fours and patiently waited for Shinishi to use his skill on her, and as he did it, she proceeded to scream and struggle in a disturbing way. After this was done, Elna laid on the floor like a lifeless doll, and the moment he had seen this, he went on to inquire about her condition, for which she didn't give a reply. Meanwhile, the dragon was still terrorizing the town, so Shinishi knew that he needed to hurry and help as much as he could, so in the next moment, he had asked Elna whether she felt like she was capable of moving, but just then, Elna had begun to laugh maniacally which had severely shocked Shinchai. Then with a villainous look in her eye, she stated that she had never felt this large amount of power ever in her life, so with that, she believed that she would now be able to pull off a spell which was formerly so difficult for her to perform. Then in the next moment, the dragon had most likely sensed her large aura of energy, so it began to charge towards them. At that point, Shinishi was aware that it was quickly approaching them, so he went on ask Elna whether she was capable of defeating it. So without replying to his statement, she urged Shinishi to stay back while she attempted to make use of her advanced magic. So in the next moment, she made successfully use the technique known as Flame Burst. Then all of a sudden, her hidden powers had been awakened. So at this point, whether the HSD successfully eliminated the monster would be a mystery. Just then, Elna had a flashback of when her father was being harsh on her because he believed that she should have learned some intermediate magic by then. So with that, he had deemed her to be an embarrassment to the Freddia family, and as time went on, people had told her that it would be okay since she had magic power. So it was just believed that she would be able to use intermediate magic at some point. Then after she had been kicked out from her house, she knew that she couldn't return home until she became a great sorceress. Back to the present, Elna had used her newly acquired power to defeat the dragon with ease. She then urged everyone who was watching to take a look at what he had done with her mighty power. This immense power was what she had been seeking all along, so something like a Factus dragon was a pushover. Shinishi observed that the Factus dragon and went on to wonder whether he had actually killed it, after which, 
he decided to make a final stab as a safety measure. But at the moment that he had stabbed the dragon, it had immediately woken up and gave off an extremely loud roar. The moment that Elna had noticed this, she took action and decided to make use of her flame wall technique which was apparently an intermediate magic spell that absorbed fire attacks. However, Elna subsequently realized that the dragon already had a ton of vitality. Once Elna had placed the wall, she noticed that it was trying to run away, so Shinishi knew that they needed to stop it as soon as possible. He then asked Elna whether she had any magic that was capable of stopping movements. She reasoned that electric paralyze wouldn't work because it was too weak, but at the same time, she felt that the flame chain technique might work because it was a large monster. So her flame chain wouldn't be able to hold it for so long. Shiny she didn't see much of a problem with it. So she just asked Elna to do the best she could to create an opening for them. So in the next moment, she had cast the flame chain spell, which in turn, had covered the entire dragon in tight chains. Shinishi knew that this was the right moment for him to act. So he then sprinted towards the dragon while stating that this time, he was going to be landing the finishing blow, then as he used his magic sword to attack the dragon, he noticed that his attacks had a much stronger effect than it formerly was. Just then, the dragon had knocked Shinishi down, and in the next moment, the chains that were on the dragon had broken off, and in the next moment, Mikey had made a very loud sound which had drawn the attention of the dragon. At first, Shinishi had yelled Mikey's in an attempt to let him stop him from endangering himself. As Mikey ran away from the dragon, he stated that he really hoped that it wasn't too late for him to get in on the reward. Speaking of which, he also mentioned that he could only buy them a small bit of time. Meanwhile, Annie sat on the floor and had subsequently asked Elna whether she was capable of launching that fire magic again, for which she had replied saying that she could, but it might be a little tough to cast one of those forces once more. Annie then looked directly at Elna and mentioned that she was the only one who could fire magic that was powerful enough to defeat the dragon. Annie had also added that she was willing to lend Elna some of her power so that she would be able to cast her strongest magic one more time. So as Annie lent her the magic, she couldn't believe that her little crybaby sister had grown so much. After which, she had held Elna firmly and told her that she was definite that she would be able to pull it off. So in the next moment after she had received the power, she realized that her body was currently overflowing with magical power. So with that, she had clenched her staff and vowed that she was going to use this battle to make her big sister proud. Once she was ready for the attack, she urged the rest of them to get back at first. Then in the next moment, she had made use of her maximum level flame burst technique, which in turn had absolutely left the dragon with no other choice than to burn down. And as Annie witnessed the massive explosion, she was amazed at the amount of force that had been put into the attack. It was so strong that Annie claimed that it even surpassed that of the best of the best. Subsequently, Elna had fallen to the ground, and as Annie rushed to her aid, Elna had replied saying that she was okay. It's just that she had used a bit too much of her magic power. After she had said this, she went on to ask about the condition of the dragon to know whether she had successfully defeated it, for which Annie replied saying that it had a ton of vitality. However, it wasn't moving anymore, which implied that the dragon was dead and Elna had defeated the dragon all on her own. Just then, Shinishi and Piro had arrived, and the moment she had seen Lim, she remarked saying that she was overjoyed that he was alright. Then in the next moment, Piro had jumped into Elna's arms, and as she held him, she noticed that he had a lot of wounds and scratches all over his body which she was surprised by. But she later hugged him and realized that those wounds were from the time where he was fighting his heart out while she was out of the fight. Just then, Mikey remarked saying that this homeless party was really something. He then added that he had always thought that there was something off about them. But at the same time, they always managed to prove him wrong. Following this, Shinishi had patted Elna's head while commending her by saying that they had won this battle solely because of her. He then held her hand and suggested that they all headed back to the town, for which Elna had agreed to, and at the same time, Elna had stated that from there onwards, they all should call her the great sorceress Elna. The following day, Elna had woken Shinishi up by slamming the door open while carrying some items in hand, however. This didn't really startle Shinishi because he had noticed that she had been quite noisy that entire morning so he then urged her to be quieter whenever she entered rooms. Just then, she had fully entered the room and was surprised to see that Shinishi was somehow walking on the walls, which was all thanks to the wall walk ability that he had acquired. Shinishi then stated that he had picked up a ton of awesome skills from the Factus Dragon, and apparently, this meant that Shinishi was slowly becoming superhuman. Elna then told Shinishi to forget about that and focus on the fact that she had gotten their reward for defeating the dragon which was the sum of 30 gold coins. So with that, Elna had suggested that they all went out to do some shopping. 
As Shinishi stood on the wall, he asked Elna whether there was something she was looking to buy in particular, for which she replied saying that she wanted things such as clothes and makeup. So in the next moment, Shinishi had asked Elna whether an adventurer even needed to wear makeup in the first place, for which she replied saying that it was indeed a necessary expense for her to be a beautiful sorceress. Shortly after, they had all gone to the market for shopping, where Shinishi was surprised that condiments existed in this world. He saw condiments such as soy sauce and miso, so he reasoned that he would most likely be able to eat some Japanese food with them. As he looked at the condiments, he had a rather crazy look on his face, so Elna went on to ask him just for how long he was going to keep that weird face of his own. As they continued to move around the market, Elna figured that the next thing for them to do would be to get some spare clothes for Piro. Elna then asked Shinishi to watch over their stuff while she went with Piro to get some new clothes. So as Shinishi sat down at a bench, he noticed some guys who were dressed in armor and figured that they weren't adventurers but rather looked like knights. Shinishi then overheard one knight asking the other whether he was certain that no one had come to this town. The other knight then replied saying that if the witnesses were right, then he would have to be somewhere around there. But at the same time, he realized that it would be quite difficult to search for him in such a spacious area. Just then, as Shinishi sat peacefully at the bench, a female knight had approached him and stated that she wished to ask him a question. So in the next moment, she had asked Shinishi what was up with him showing up out of the blue. After the female knight had spoken, Shinishi reasoned that she was indeed a beauty. But at the same time, he assumed that she was a rather condescending lady. A few moments had passed, so the knight had asked Shinishi what was with his attitude. After which, she stated that she was fully fledged knight, so it was a pure act of disrespect to be seated while she was talking to him. Even with the change in tone of the knight, Shinishi still didn't answer and had just chosen to remain silent. At that point, the knight had gotten really pissed off, so she picked up her spear and ordered Shinishi to tell them his name otherwise she would stab him at that moment. Then with a very calm voice, he had introduced himself as Shinishi of the homeless party. The knight didn't understand what he had just said, so she proceeded to call him an impudent fool and had just believed that he was just trying to make a fool out of her. Then the dark-skinned knight had called this female knight by the name Freya, and subsequently told her to calm down a bit. He then calmly spoke to apologize for bothering him at first. The dark lecturer then stated that they were reaching out to him because they had a few questions that they would like to ask. So he then went on to ask Shinishi whether this would be okay with him. Shinishi then had a serious look on his face and stated that he would do his best to answer whatever he could and then just leave the rest. The first question that was asked was whether Shinishi had ever heard of a man that was known as Novin. Shinishi had honestly never heard that name before so he went on to reply and give a negative response. Freya then yelled at Shinishi while saying that it would be useless for him to try to lie because she had seen him acting hella sus a few moments a lot. She then assumed that he must have been frightened because he had done something that he knew he was guilty of. Then in the next moment, Shinishi had stated that he was indeed guilty of something, which was the fact that he had been looking at Freya's chest the entire time. He figured that even though she had armor covering it, they were a rather plump size so he had equally looked at the moments. He also stated that they had really great shape, so it was only natural that they would steal a man's gaze. Freya then called him a dirty pervert, but she believed that he had only said all that because he was trying to evade the question. She didn't know his location but mentioned that she wouldn't mind at all if he had tried to torture her to get that information. The dark-skinned knight then stated that as a fellow man, he understood what Shinishi was talking about. However, he still urged Freya to kindly forgive him because what he had said was still very inappropriate. Shinishi was happy to see that there was a fellow man who understood his point, so from that, Shinishi assumed that he must also be at the mercy of such ripe fruit. Subsequently, and with a rather calm voice, Shinishi had stated that he wasn't aware of the person they were looking for and also apologized for not being able to offer any help. After hearing this, the Dark Knight decided that there was just no point in questioning him any further, so right before he and Freya departed, he thanked him for giving them his time. Just then, Elna had arrived with Piro and apologized for having Shinishi wait so long for them to be back. As Elna was walking back to Shinishi she had noticed the two knights who were conversing with Shinchai, so she went on to ask him whether they were his acquaintances or something of that sort. But Shinishi had just honestly replied saying that they were just people who had some questions to ask. In the next moment, Shinishi had asked Elna whether she had finished shopping, for which she had given a positive response. Having that in mind, Shinishi had suggested that they all head back home. But Elma mentioned that she didn't wish to go back home just yet because she still had plans of the meeting delicious food together. Shinishi rubbed his eyes while stating that he wasn't sure if it was fatigue from yesterday's fight or not, but he was feeling rather sleepy at the moment 
and just then, a banner had appeared right in front of him which informed him that he would soon be evolving. However, once the evolution was completed, he wouldn't be able to return to his previous form. Elna noticed that Shinishi felt a little uneasy, so she had asked him what about what had happened, for which he had informed her that his system was asking him whether he wished to evolve or not. And the moment she had heard this, she immediately had a shocked look on her face because a person evolving was an extremely rare feat in their world. 